dense green country town has been supplanted by a big city with a rich heritage. Cradle of liberty, workshop of the world, city of home. Philadelphia's all of these and more, a rebuilding city. Mayor Richardson Dilworth reports on progress. Last year saw dreams become fact, plans translated into action, underscoring the progress, the performance, and the plans were people, Philadelphians, who served and were served. There were strides to stamp out blight, new experiments to ease the strangulation of mass transportation, bold and unprecedented action to hold and attract industry, new projects buildings, highways, and bridges were completed, and still more are being planned. In no small measure, the progress was due to a courageous and understanding city council working in harmony with the administration. We can portray only a few results of combined planning and action here. These are measured in terms of brick and stone and steel. Also, very much present is the heart and soul of a city reborn, the spirit of its dedicated people. There is no awakening for many in the city because there is no sleep. Our firemen battled ravaging flames through many dawns. Their fire prevention programs won the top award for the fifth straight year. Philadelphia's army of almost 5,000 men in blue held the crime increase to 3% last year, against a national rise of 8%. Day and night, an officer is at your call, anywhere in the city, within three minutes. Evenings, the lamplighter's flame is gone. Installed last year were more than 3,000 electric lights that think for themselves, triggered by the disappearing sun. Modern mercury vapor lamps on main thoroughfares transform the dark to glareless light. Through the night and all day long, help by telephone. City hall operators referred up to 75,000 calls a day. Some emergency. Like this one to the city's poison information center. Courteous, efficient, speedy service. country town is still green in the city's parks and playgrounds, and wet in the 43 city pools where more than two million Philadelphians splash during the swimming season, and relaxing to music lovers who continually overflow the Robin Hood Dell concert. Book lovers, one out of every five Philadelphians, borrowed a record five and a half million volumes from our free libraries last year. New and renovated branch libraries attracted visitors of all ages. To safeguard the health of the community, two modern health centers were opened last year, serving about a half a million persons. Philadelphia General Hospital was consolidated and streamlined to provide better medical services to its patients. A new child welfare center opened to care for the city's dependent and neglected children. And an ounce of prevention policy by the city's public health department helps avert a possibly tragic polio epidemic through mass inoculation. Philadelphia, the city of home. Fine residences. Tall office and apartment buildings. limited access highways. Last year, 53 new streets were added to the city map. 20 miles of streets were paved. 126 miles were resurfaced and converted into first-class highways. For the new homes and the old water, the Torresdale filtration plant, which will serve almost half the city, neared completion. Filters are being reconstructed at another filtration plant, and work on yet another will begin soon. New main and sewer installations were common sites throughout the city. A million and a half dollar contract for flood relief started in the Northeast. And Philadelphia, notorious in past years, won the National Clean Streams Award. Over and under, 
Sleek, curving super roads weave new ribbons of concrete into and out of the hub of the city. The face of Philadelphia continued to change at sky and ground level as the Roosevelt Boulevard extension began to burrow beneath the Broad Street subway on its way to the Schoolkill Expressway. An impressive gateway to Midtown is Parktown Place in combination with the Expressway Link and the Vine Street Bridge. Construction of other expressways will soon link traffic with the Walt Whitman Bridge in South Philadelphia. Under the bridge, business continued to boom for the Port of Philadelphia. The $3 million modernization of Piers 38 and 40 South was completed. And the huge food distribution center, unequaled in the nation, began to rise from what used to be a South Philadelphia dump. In the air, mammoth transports increased international airport business 10 times faster than the national rate, prompting plans to expand the terminal. Completion of the new 10,000-foot landing strip gave Philadelphia the finest jet-age airport in the East. Not everything is new. The fine old colonial area of the city was re-established. A cobblestone's throw from lovely Independence Mall in old Philadelphia. The Washington Square East redevelopment is a planned blend of modern apartment units with traditional colonial homes. Urban renewal in the Cambridge Manor and Northwest Temple areas, typified by these buildings, one national praise. Now Eastwick, an unprecedented city within a city, rising from southwest marshes and wastelands. But building is only part of the story. Preservation is a part, too. Employees of the city's Department of Licenses and Inspections toured Blight Belt, enlisting the aid of neighborhood groups in stemming the tide of decay. Philadelphia is business, industry, jobs for its people. A new industrial development corporation, the nation's first joint effort by a city government and chamber of commerce came into being. Its purpose, to attract new business to the city and keep old business here. To ease traffic congestion, another major problem requires vision and courage. Operation Northwest, another Philadelphia first, provided a plan for low-cost rail fares to Center City, with better schedules and transfer privileges for buses. Keeping up with the times and the traffic was a new million-dollar electronic control system. The mechanical brain coordinating more than 300 downtown intersections adapts light changes to meet the traffic flow. Transistors replace quill pens in keeping the city's finances straight, too. With IBM machines electronically billing Philadelphians for their share of progress, we were the largest American city to be honored by the Municipal Finance Officers Association. Modern methods increased delinquent water and sewer collections by almost 25%, and the city treasurer earned us more than $684,000 in interest. Modern methods for old records, too. Microfilm replacements, roll ledgers save time, space, and taxpayers' money. Running the city takes a big team. More than 30,000 applicants applied for and took civil service tests last year with merit as the appointment criterion. For those already in city jobs, supervisory training programs and employee suggestion systems were carried out. The city signed labor agreements guaranteeing bargaining rights for non-uniformed workers. And city lawyers were also busy representing their two and a half million clients in trying to keep Blue Cross and fire insurance rates low, and in negotiating with the PTC. Overseas, Philadelphia was the only American city represented at the Brussels World's Fair. The exhibit was reproduced from this one at the Trade and Convention Center, where thousands of Philadelphians pushed buttons to see the panorama of their city as it is, as it is becoming, and as it will be. In the words of Mayor Dilworth, there are no problems we cannot solve provided we work together. 
And remember that the counsel of boldness and courage is the counsel of wisdom. Our greatest asset is our people. Philadelphia is blessed with wonderful people, devoted to it, confident of its future. We must not be afraid to plan and dream, not just idle dreams, but dreams which energy and the will to do can translate into reality. <laughs>